Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail, the shop manager here, approved some training for the day on the premises. So we're going to train a noob how to wet sand. There's a lot of information, so we're going to start with the basics. And we have a test panel here with many layers of imperfections. You're not going to see too many panels like this come in with just about everything in one little section, but that way we can tackle everything from deep scratches through the clear coat, uh, scratches into the base coat, and scratches all the way down to the metal or the plastic itself. And then there are light topical scratches that we can go after uh, by using the wet sand method. And we're going to do that for you today. Here's just a very small sample of some of the tools used in the wet sand process and really anything from sand blocks that you can palm in your hand comfortably to um, blocks that are quite stiff. We also have very small blocks to get in tight areas and just really concentrate on smaller scratches. And then we have uh, sanding sheets, wet sand sheets, and also foam discs that can be attached to uh, your palm block or also a pneumatic sander or polisher uh, by the hook and loop backing. Once again, just a very small sample of what can be used during the process. You can really go down the rabbit hole just as in any industry and stock and line up your walls entirely with the tools and products needed for the job. Back to the test panel. Again, many different types of scratches. Scratches through the clear into the base coat, down into the plastic or metal. Very topical scratches that you can remove rather easily during the wet sand process. So what we want to do first is give you an idea of the type of temperature spiking that you can get using a polisher if you are not comfortable with the wet sand process and just want to use a rotary or dual action polisher to remove the scratches. It can be done, sure, uh, but at a cost of a little bit of stress to the clear coat and you can spike temperatures. Uh, the ambient or room temperature of the panel is about 72, 73, 74 degrees. And you can see it will spike up northwards of 20 degrees uh, from the rest of the panel. And that's where you put a lot of stress on the clear coat or single stage because uh, all those materials, they will expand when heated in various different directions and in different ways. So what I like to do is start towards me and work my way outward and push the residue away in short strokes, just like this. We're starting off with 2000 grit. We're going to take care of this whole section. And it doesn't take long before you start to see that uh, white chalky substance on the surface. Uh, that's being pulled up from the clear coat. That's actual clear coat itself that we are shaving away using the wet sand process. I like to go uh, and, and sand until we get a nice little um, layer of the residue. And once we see that, I like to clean it off. If you're starting out, and you're not comfortable with the process, once you start seeing the clear coat there, uh, clean it off regularly, check your work, and don't go any further than is needed to remove the imperfection that you're going after, whether it be a dust nib or a scratch or oxidation. This is kind of what it looks like. Now you have this deep scratch here. With deeper scratches, we like to go and sand across the scratch and then the long way with the scratch. And that way we can round off all of those jagged edges, which we'll talk about just in a few short seconds.
So what we're trying to do, if this is the surface and we have a scratch going in there, that's kind of what it would look like, all jagged. And that's why you see that light white kind of look to it, unless it's down to the bare metal. And what we're trying to do is just round off all these jagged edges. And then the light can't refract off of these edges and look so terrible. So that's what we're trying to do, just round it off. And then eventually make it look like this. Yeah, removing the jagged edges within the scratches, the ones that we cannot remove entirely, will make them less visible on the surface. So now it's time to step down from 2000 grit, which did the majority of the work, and we don't want to go any further, to 3000 grit, which will bring clarity to the panel. So it's funny to think about it, but we're removing scratches with scratches, and the surface will get clearer and clearer each step, eventually stepping down to a very light polish. And then once again, uh, starting with the portion of the panel nearest to me and working my uh, way out away from me, outward, pushing the residue away, you'll see Brian pick that up quickly and he'll do a rather nice job. Even with 3000 grit, you're going to see it doesn't take long before you get that chalky substance on the surface. And that, again, is more clear coat being pulled. So once you start to see that, uh, we'll clean off the panel, check our work. And once everything looks nice and uniform, we're going to move on to the next step. Also, moving on from one step to another, the work area will get a little bit larger and larger as we blend things in. As often as you think of it, bring in the water and rinse off the pads, rinse off the panel. That residue, keep it flushed away. That will keep the pad effective, cut down on the time you're working on the panel, and a nice uniform cut from that pad is likely if you keep it clean. There are some neat dedicated wet sanding machines that will keep a constant feed of moisture flushing that pad away, keeping them effective, but we'll get into machine wet sanding versus hand sanding in a future video. Okay, I gave you a demonstration of how using the polisher repeatedly back and forth in one area can spike temperatures. If you're using the wet sand process to remove imperfections, and sometimes we just save that for major imperfections, you're going to see here not only does it not spike temperatures, but very slightly by a tenth of a degree can cool the portion of the panel you're working on. You can see just how uniform the cut was uh, with the 3000 grit and we are now ready to step down to really all you're going to need is a one step polish and a medium polish pad or a one step pad and you can easily remove 3000 grit sand marks with that process. Even at this point, you could still see the deeper uh, scratches will remain. I mean, they are through the clear coat and uh, even base coat and down to the, the metal or, or plastic but they will be improved. Let's uh, bring some clarity back to the panel with either the fine pad or the one-step pad, and 3D1 in this case, it really doesn't matter what you use, and uh, we'll take a look and, and just see a huge turnaround on the panel. Oh, yeah. 
Using this method, we've really only we're only going to use the the dual action polisher, or if you're using a rotary for a short period of time, to remove all of these imperfections. Not just repeatedly going back and forth with the machine spiking the temperature. So you've done a lot of work and cut down on a lot of stress on the surface of this panel. And that will keep it simple if you're, you're, you're just starting out, just starting to get comfortable with wet sanding. It is a quick and easy process. Once you get a little bit of time and practice, pick up some junk panels like this. Believe me, body shops would be happy to see you if you're taking away some of the panels that they don't have to worry about. Take them home, pick up some horses at uh, Home Depot, set them up in your garage or backyard and practice. Uh, the more experience you get, the more comfortable you will get with the process, and you will absolutely love the results. So let's use a panel prep here just to show you that the polish isn't hiding the imperfections, and we'll give you some before and after footage. Even the real deep scratches and imperfections, you'd have to be at just the right angle with the right amount of light for them to be noticeable when before they really jumped out at you, um, even at a distance. Something Something else you could encounter one day when it comes to wet sanding, somebody might want you to remove, remove texture, the orange peel effect on clear coat. That's, uh, you know, they can make clear coat perfectly flat if they wanted to, but there's a reason there's orange peel there. Uh, so this would be on just a, a stock manufactured car. If you go to try to remove texture from uh, a new vehicle that barely has enough clear coat to begin with, you're going to be sanding and you're going to be shaving down the clear in the peaks and the valleys. So by the time you get it perfectly flat or flat enough that it gives you the effect that it's, it doesn't have the, uh, the orange peel look to it, you're going to be way down below where you should have taken that clear to begin with. Mm -hmm. That can be done on custom uh, paint jobs where they left enough of the material to sand flat and it would probably be about to here by the time you get it flat, still with plenty of, of clear left. But by the time you get, uh, you know, a stock vehicle and remove the texture, you're going to have that clear coat down way too thin. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Okay. Now, if you are going to be doing uh, a job like this and there is enough clear coat, instead of using something like this that's soft, uh, you know, you have the Trizac disc or anything with a foam backing and then a, uh, a foam pad or block, hand block. What you want to do is you want to get a nice firm block and a thin sheet and attach. Why is that? Well, if you have something soft, it's going to contour and it's going to sand the peaks and the valleys alike. If you use something like this that's a lot more firm, you're gonna be getting more of the peaks, leaving some of the valley. The valley's still gonna get it because even this will contour a little bit, um, but you're gonna have more success sanding off these peaks if you use something stiff like a block and a sheet. Okay, so wet sanding, not so scary. No. What have you taken away? It's a lot easier to correct the bigger and smaller imperfections in the paint without actually taking away a lot of the clear coat. And at the same time, you're not spiking the temperature as much. So it prevents a lot of things 
from happening to make the pain a lot worse. Right. So uh, this is just one uh, quick installment. We will bring you a few more installments. One will be machine wet sanding versus uh, wet sanding by hand. And another will be how to approach uh, oxidation. An another problem we see a lot here with the classic antique and collectible cars. You can take care of that imperfection with wet sanding as well and we'll cover it. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. We'll catch you in the next video.